In this video, we're going to look at the precise definition of a limit. So given a function f on an open interval containing the point a, the limit as f goes to a of f of x is going to equal l if, for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if zero is less than the distance between x and a, which is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l is less than f. So what this means pictorially is that if we're looking at a general function f and we pick a point a where we're trying to find the limit, then by our precise definition, there is an interval around a that is small enough that has a distance or radius of delta, so from A out to either side, there's this delta, then what this tells us is that the limit as X goes to A is going to be bounded between an interval with radius epsilon in the Y direction. And so there's this small window where our limit can exist. And if we find the delta and epsilon at just the right values, we can pinpoint where this limit is. So let's look at an example. We want to use the epsilon delta definition to show that the limit as x goes to 10 of 3 minus 4 fifths x is equal to negative 5. So what this means is we want to find a delta so, so the distance between x and the value of 10 is less than delta n, such that the distance between the function value at x and the function value at 10, which we're assuming is this limit, is less than epsilon. Okay, so we basically need to find those two values, the epsilon and the delta. In other words, we want delta, so 0 is less than or equal to x minus 10, is less than delta, which will then imply that the distance between the function value and the limit is less than epsilon. That's what we want to show. So to do this, we need to figure out what delta should be in terms of epsilon. Because if we can figure that out, then we should be able to simplify it down and show that this statement is true. So to find our delta, we're going to start with the fact that we have this expression here. Okay. So if we look at this, I'm going to look at 3 minus 4 fifths x minus a negative 5. This in absolute value. We can simplify, because basically we have some numbers here, so we can just simplify this. This is going to be plus a 5 and 3, so that's going to be an 8 minus a 4 fifths x, which we can think of as 40 over 5 minus 4 fifths x. So here we can factor a 4 fifths out, or if you like the absolute value of 4 fifths, that'll come out. And then that will leave us with a 10 minus x. Okay. But notice, 10 minus x, we want to be less than delta. So in this case, let's assume at its biggest, it is delta. But if we remember what we said here, this expression, which we've just brought down to here, has to be less than epsilon, which means we want delta to be less than 5 over 4 epsilon. Okay. So now we have a relationship between our delta and our epsilon. And here, as long as delta is less than this, so we can actually make this the biggest delta is and look and see what happens. So to show that this works, if 
0 is less than x minus 10, which is less than delta, where delta is 5 over 4 epsilon, then we get that 3 minus 4 over 5x minus a negative 5 in absolute value, which we know from what we did there is 8 minus 4 over 5x, which is equal to 4 fifths of 10 minus x, which again we know is less than delta, says that this is less than 4 over 5 times delta, which we've labeled from above to be 4 fifths. 5 fourths epsilon. And if we simplify following our expressions here, it says that this um, difference between our function and our limit is going to be less than epsilon, which is what we wanted. So as long as when we look at these intervals, so in this case if I kind of drew in a graph here, this is a linear function that's decreasing. If I'm looking at um, when x is 10, so way over here somewhere, as long as I am picking a small enough val uh, interval, and in this case that interval being at most 5 fourths epsilon, then I know that my limit at that point is going to be at negative 5.